<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And now, boys and girls and the rest, it's homework time once again here on the old Popon Film Podcast. Yes. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your pitiful trolling and kindly pay attention! Yes. Each week, the Pope on Film podcast assigns homework in the hopes of bettering its listeners, nay, society. And this week, somehow, some how, mm-hmm. somehow, it's unclear as to the how or why, but this week we are somehow doing our first ever homework assignment that has anything to do with Scientology. Yes. How is this possible? Yes. Well, you know, every now and then you have to stop and realize it's not just Christians. There are other batshit religions out there that need our attention. Yeah, it, it and is few special. come as batshit as 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 Scientology. Oh yeah, this is especially shocking considering that I spent like a good year and a half, two years, just ruthlessly attacking Scientology on the water. Yeah, meaning that I am most definitely on some sort of no doubt real life Scientology enemy list. Oh sure. That being said, I am really, really, uh, really glad that we decided to watch two videos and not just the crazy-ass propaganda. (laughs) So we are focusing on two videos here. Number one... Now, um, for me, for me, though, as of late, and I'm kind of running out of it now, but as of late, I've been on a real Scientology kick. Really? Which is how I found the orientation one. You know, yeah, I've got the story behind it too. So the now it is quite interesting. So now the other one though, I watched it and I watched it twice, but in my head it is scrambled amongst many other murders and death. <laughs> yeah. Cause the videos have exploded since Leanne Rem- Remini came out. Yeah. There used to be a handful of Scientology videos, you know, and the best you can really get off of them is like, they're really kind of douchebags, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And they would say bad, you know, a narrator would say bad things. Oh, they do this, they do this, they do this. But now there's, there's like a lot of people who've left Scientology and they've all started putting up YouTube channels and doing their own shows. Yeah. Shit is all over the place. Yeah. And there's much better books about it, too. I've so, read some really great books over the last, like, five years about yeah. Scientology. So, specifically what is in this documentary on Scientology mysteries and things like that? Mm-hmm. Don't know how well I'm going to be able to remember the individual cases. But that's 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 fine. That's I can fine. definitely talk about yeah. Scientology death and other weirdness. Yeah. So this week we're focusing on two videos. Number one, the leaked Scientology orientation video that you watch when you are uh, you know starting into the world of Scientology, and Wasn't the real wonderful. stories, and the real stories documentary Scientology suspicious deaths. So let's cover the leaked video first but before we do here's a little um primer on scientology if you're uh, not as well versed as bunny and i are scientology it's technically a religion but really it's a dangerous cult that was started by a mediocre author and college dropout who lied about a decorated naval career that never happened mm-hmm so L. Ron Hubcap decided that the best way to con fucking suckers out of money is to create a phony baloney religion. But the smart thing that he did was base his bullshit religion on how science is a lie, Scientology is a scam, and the government is full of liars who are out to get you. People are automatically re- mistrusting 
distrusting of all of that shit. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's how lying rapist Donald Trump became president. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So Scientology is a religion, but in order to be a Scientologist, you have to pay a crazy amount of money and go through all these classes to reach various levels. Uh Like, imagine, imagine being a Christian, but in order to be a true Christian, you have to buy each of the different Bible passages. Yeah, exactly. And pay, take a class on each Bible class. Like, ooh, I just got to Deuteronomy. Mm-hmm. Ooh, so you're a level 18. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. I need, that's I, I need $8,000 to get Leviticus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And allegedly, uh, cough, cough, BS, cough, cough, cough. At the highest Tom Cruise-like levels of Scientology, you can control shit with your mind. Mm-hmm. You have magical powers. You're basically almost like a god, which might yes. explain why Tom Cruise doesn't have too many bombs under his belt. Tom Cruise needs to fail more. <laughs> Even when Tom Cruise fails, it's like, oh, man, the mummy only made $389 million. Ooh. No, God damn it! Tom Cruise needs a real big bomb. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's had too much success. Pissed me off. Tom Cruise, man. Tom Cruise. Also. And he is so fucking suckered, man. He is just David McCavage's butt boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, and also. I, I've really gotten to just really dislike Tom Cruise. You know? Because, like, yeah. get a clue, dude. You're fucking hurting people. You know? You abandoned your fucking infant daughter. Don't tell me you don't know something's wrong here. Yeah. According to the book, um, Going Clear, um, the really good movies that Tom Cruise did in like the 90s came from the fact that Tom Cruise finally reached the upper level of Scientology. And when they started talking to him about the aliens in the volcano, he went, what the fuck? And then quietly left Scientology and went about making really good movies that Scientology would never let him do, which is why he did Interview with a Vampire and Magnolia. Yeah. Both very good movies. Yeah, and a few other really good ones that he did around that time. (laughs) Eventually, like, they brought him back because uh, allegedly they had some really nasty information about him because when you're doing an auditing session, they record everything. So basically, they Scientology has a record of every bad thing you've ever done ever. Mm Mm-hmm. But... Um, we are all secretly alien spirits who were destroyed billions of years ago by the evil alien overlord Xenu. But another genius bit of Scientology, by the time you spend 20 years of your life Uh and millions of dollars on Scientology, then the grand overlord Xenu isn't that fucking crazy. Because they have already spent like, because they've already spent like 25 years uh, programming you and getting deep into your life. So by the time they tell you this batshit crazy stuff about the Grand Overlord Xenu, you are already brainwashed. Well, that would have to be such brainwashed. That would have to be such serious, just cognitive dissonance. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that right there and right then, when you find out the big secret that you have been working to your whole life and paying all that money. You got to justify it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to buy in or you're going to feel like an idiot. Mhm. I mean, you're an idiot anyway. You know, but you're an idiot that spent what? A million dollars? Yeah. 500 grand, you know. However yeah. much they can really get out of you is what you pay really. Yeah. But the thing is that Scientology is shrouded in secrecy because that's the way that they're going to make money is by hiding all of the secrets of Scientology from normal people like you and me. So, right. and they have, shrouded. and they have, they have the snitch culture. Yeah, they have the snitch culture so that if you say something to one of your Scientologist friends that isn't quite Scientology enough, 
then they write up a knowledge report on you. Yes. And you are in trouble. And if they don't, and somebody else writes up the knowledge report, they're in trouble for not writing up a knowledge report. Yeah. Yeah. So how can you possibly even speak to anybody? You know, I, yeah. how no. can you just have a conversation with somebody? Yeah, no, you just absolutely can't. You absolutely cannot. So the whole, the whole organization is shrouded in secrecy, but in 2008, Someone secretly recorded the the secret Scientology orientation video with a grainy camcorder. Yes. You know you know who did? Who? Fucking WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks? WikiLeaks fucking recorded the secret Scientology orientation video with a grainy right. ass camcorder. WikiLeaks actually stopped trying to destroy the Democratic Party for 5 seconds to do something good. <laughs> That was a shocking thing. Like, oh my god, WikiLeaks made this? Oh my god, they did a good. <laughs> it's like when you read that comic book where the only way to destroy this bad guy is for the Fantastic Four to team up with Doctor Doom. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so he's a good guy, what, for like three issues, and then he's going to turn on him. Okay, yeah, WikiLeaks is Doctor Doom. There you go. Got it. Perfect analogy, so, I think, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So the Scientology, the leaked Scientology orientation video is crazy. Um, billions of Scientologists could be your friends. Um, yeah. Just because there are a bunch of Scientologists in the world doesn't give you. A, that's not a. That's not necessarily a good thing. You know. Mm -hmm. You know what else there are billions of on, in this planet pedophiles yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean that like oh you think that i'm bad for being a pedophile well there are millions and millions of others yeah. so that must give us pedophiles credit no no <laughs> the fact that there are a, a lot of you does not give you credit of any kind and that number is not even nearly true yeah, no, no way that there are billions of Scientologists that could be your friends. You see, this one video. of the guys, one of the guys in some in one of the videos that I had seen, one of the guys who got out of Scientology, most likely worked on that film. That's what he oh, did, yeah. and he was like, "You would inflate and change numbers all the time." He says they probably have roughly like two hundred and fifty thousand members. Yeah, I've, I, in I've Scientology read worldwide. That, yeah. Yeah. Like not even a million. It, it, this is what this video felt like. This video felt like if Disney, if Walt Disney, like maybe five years before he died, he fell into Scientology. Yeah. And so he removed great moments with Mr. Lincoln and he decided to put in something that promoted Scientology. Mm -hmm. It would be this video. <laughs> This video is real Kool-Aid drinking, you know? I, I don't know. It also felt very infomercial to me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ex very much so. Yeah. And don't forget, the government, the government hates Scientology because the government is trying to mind control its people. And mm -hmm. Dianetics and Scientology combats all that. Wow, what courage. Mm-hmm. I took umbrage to the part where um, the uh, narrator took you to the bookstore. Oh, looks like we'll have to wait. L. Ron Hubbard's books are very popular. <laughs> Bullshit. Well, that's what I was going to say. I, I, I took umbrage when they said L. Ron Hubbard was a great writer. <laughs> yeah. There was one time at my other, at my last store where someone purchased Dianetics. They were, they, it's, it's something that we can special order for you, but not something we ever carry. So someone ordered it and it, and it, it came into the receiving area. It, it was a uh, vacuum sealed. It was shrink wrapped. Yeah. So, uh, what someone who totally is not me did was 
we have one of these sealers, you know, mm -hmm. in the back room that can uh, that can uh, uh, shrink wrap it up. So this person who, again, is totally not me, opened up the uh, the shrink wrap around Dianetics, printed out information about some of the books that we did have that attacked Scientology. Yeah. Put them in the Dianetics book and sealed it up again. <laughs> so nice. that eventually when this person, no doubt Mexican, Scientology, very popular with Mexicans. I really? Heard. Yeah. Because Mexicans don't, because like your typical like abuelita, like, like, like a like a fifty eight year old woman from the old country in Mexico yeah. doesn't know a goddamn thing about Scientology other than oh is this that thing that Tom Cruise does like this this old Mexican woman doesn't know anything about yeah uh, David Miska whatever and of all of the all of the 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 shocking truths and hasn't yeah. seen any exposés and anything like that so. Very popular in Latin American uh, neighborhoods and this and that. Like we his, would go to the his, when we were in Scientology, we would go to like the bad neighborhood Walmart, and yeah. they would always be like free personality tests. Like yeah. there would always be like a like a table right in front of the Walmart, and it's like with the Scientologist there, always. <laughs> his you father know, left David Cassad Miscavige. Yes, his yes. dad even left. A lot of people have yeah. left. Oh, yeah. So the video tries and fails, m amazingly fails, to try and describe the different levels of Scientology and the different organizations. It's so damn confusing, Tolkien couldn't follow this. <laughs> it's True. like you would, have, you would have better luck going to, uh, uh, going to a fan and saying, hey, can you sit down and explain to me how to play Magic the Gathering? <laughs> that would actually be easier than having someone say, can you explain to me the different levels of Scientology? Mm -hmm. Basically. Mm -hmm. I am definitely not on post. But aren't you, aren't you comforted that everything that L. Ron Hubbard has ever said or done is being engraved on silver plates? And put in a in a vault, so that they could survive I, I a actually, nuclear holocaust. I actually thought of that. I actually thought of the whole idea of like they got this like fat rapist con man mm -hmm. and turned everything he did into a massive success, where he's the next Buddha. Yeah. They actually said over and over again they they liken him to the Buddha. So I thought it interesting. Like I had like this move, this, this video gave me daydreams basically yeah. of like a hundred years into the future. And then our hero, Steve started recording the greatest podcast in the world. <laughs> Millions of people listened to it mm -hmm. and had their minds opened by Steve and Bunny's wisdom. <laughs> Steve and Bunny were great men. <laughs> But of course, the government yep. wanted them to stop podcasting. Yeah, because they dared to challenge the authority of the president. Yeah, people in 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 uh, beautifully mana like beautifully made suits and uh, pantsuits being on on post <laughs> about us and our message. I also just love how calm everybody's voice is. Yes. That's why here at Scientology, we believe in the spirit. Like, oh, God, like you give me the chills with that beautiful ass. At least until the end where they get hardcore. But anyway. Yeah. Then yes. they discuss audio. And then they and totally love. break the fourth wall. So it's like, it's that's what gave it the infomercial feel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because they're where, talking to you this whole time. Where they're kind of trying to make it, mm, you know, kind of documentary ish yeah. you know he's walking yeah. through he's going here he's going there meeting this one meeting this one and whoever he's meeting eventually just breaks the fourth wall turns to the camera and starts doing their own little pitch mm -hmm. yes maxwell what 
What? Oh, to make my medicine gummies. Your medicine gummies. I'll give you some in a little bit. I'll give no. you some during the next break. No. Can you, what? No. Can I finish it? Can you finish it? I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'll check it out after during this next break, okay? Okay. okay. Did you just fart? Yeah. On the podcast? No. Oh my god, I can't believe that next week. You just farted. You know what? What? Fifty five demerits. What? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, fifty five demerits. Demer- Twenty points from Gryffindor. One meow meow bean. You're now down to three meow meow beans. I'm going to put you down the four meow meow beans. <gasps> Not the Outlands. <laughs> so then the video goes to a uh, an accountant who is apparently an auditor. Don't, don't skip the missionary. Oh, yeah. The, no, uh, the missionary. The missionary. I was yeah. kind of drunk when I was watching this. What, what was the missionary part? Well, the mission, the, the minister, the ministry. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The non-denominational church that anyone can go to. Who the fuck was that guy, though? He No, he, he really did seem like a, like a character actor from the 80s that I've definitely seen before. Which confused the shit out of me. Yeah. Okay? Because, like- because we're talking Scientology here, dude, okay? So, yeah. so we have a choice. Was he a minister? Or, yeah, was I don't he, know. or was he an actor playing a minister? Yeah, yeah, no. I, or I was he an actor who joined Scientology and became a minister? I think that you could basically ask that question about anything that Scientology has ever done. You know? <laughs> that that you that Scientology is just constantly asking that question. You know, and I was I just kept looking at him. And I still don't know, but I was going through like a, a a checklist through my head. Like, is it Mac from Night Court? Is yeah. it? Uh, it's not Venus Flytrap. It's yeah. you know, just like trying to go through black actors of that period to figure out who yeah. this dude was. Yeah, and I know he's somebody. somebody. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely from something. But then why that, wouldn't they have mentioned it? Because that's part of their oh, hook. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I quit acting. Then, I quit acting so I can devote myself fully to Scientology and this ministry. Yeah, to you Scientology know? ministry. That would have been a yeah. great pitch. So yeah. I'm leaning toward they hired an actor to play a minister. Yeah, and not gotten an actual minister. Yeah. That yeah. basically Scientology was like, we need a black <laughs> yes. Well, there are no blacks in Scientology uh, other than Isaac Hayes. <laughs> but I don't think Isaac Hayes wants to play a minister. Let's hire somebody. Let's get somebody in here. <laughs> then they discuss auditing, was, which is basically a 12 hour marathon session of telling your worst secrets into a chafing dish. Um, yes. And they go and they talk about the auditing. And they go, let's go talk to an auditor. What can you tell us about auditing? Well, I could explain it to you, but instead, I'm just going to shove graphs up your butt. Yes, graphs that really have no meaning. Yeah. Unless look at this you level. explain them. Now look at this level. Ooh, look how high this one is. Yeah. Look at this line. You see yeah. how this line is bigger than that line? That means we're all right. I mean, can't you at least tell me what the X and Y axis is? Yeah. What L. Is- Ron Hubbard believes that their 12 and a half hour auditing session literally will raise your IQ and improve mm-hmm. your persona. Yeah. While, psych- while, while psychiatry is evil, only a raving lunatic would attack Scientology. Well, mm-hmm. it's official. I am a raving lunatic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, Scientology is just a special secret. Ooh, only you know about this. Mm-hmm. Only you do and nobody else does. You want this special secret. Yes, you do. The film keeps, and the film keeps doing things like, a court once said we were real. But, okay, let's, let's just. Look at this other court thing. Let's just. Here's a third court thing. Yeah. 
just, let's just jump back a second to that to the bookstore section. Yeah. What do people need to you, start in Scientology? Well, they need these eighty-four one hundred dollar books. And you know they need it before they get out of that fucking room. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the part they're not really saying on the video. Yeah. But they're not getting out of it. They're not going home until they buy those books. Yeah. I almost knocked you into the stove. Literally, people in the video, especially at the end where they have that, like, people montage, yeah. people literally act like they are actually superhumans with mm -hmm. mutant powers who will live a trillion years because of Scientology. <laughs> also, Scientology saved Christy Alley from certain death. Yeah. Dead. She would have been dead if it wasn't for Scientology. She would have died. She she sucked on Star Trek. So. Anyway, um, that video made me feel unclean and dirty and wrong. Oh, okay, but what about that whole hard sell on the end? Oh, At God, end, that, like, that just creeped me out. That just creeped me out. Yeah. And he just dropped all pretense and is just literally looking directly at you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you could live for a trillion years or you could be a dumbass. Yes. The choice you is up live. to you. The choice is up to you. No one can make this choice but you. But if you choose us, you will live to be a trillion-year-old superhero. Or you could just be a dumbass. <laughs> Do you want to be a dumbass, you dumbass? The world yeah, is a no, horrible, a dangerous place. Yeah, That's and it how was like it nine, is. It was be like away. nine minutes long, and it just went on and on, and just more yeah. and more. You're like, oh, damn, you got me monologuing. It was mm -hmm. really creepy as hell. It was creepy as hell. The ending scared me. I mm want -hmm. my food. Then uh, sit over here. So so that video made me feel yucky. So it was refreshing to move to the real stories documentary Scientology Suspicious what? Deaths. Yes. And hey, it's great that you're attacking Scientology, but I just wish it was a bit less gotcha. You yeah. Know? Like it, like the whole video came off as like way smarmy. Mm -hmm. Like this woman's son died because of Scientology, so we took her to the place where her son died and recorded her as she was disgusted. <laughs> Watch as she shakes and cries. We definitely got her in this video. Yeah. Here, let me show a close-up so we can all revel in her tears. Yeah. Like, Lord, Lord. Right there. Like, seriously, calm, calm your ass, because you're in Fox News beast mode right now. <laughs> you're, at, you're at like a nine, and we need you at like a five. Mm -hmm. This did seem to be a German documentary, which might be why it's so serious and dour and not fun. Possibly. But it's nice to see that this documentary continues the fine tradition of not knowing how to pronounce David Miskagavi's last name. Because it, it literally had like three or four different pronunciations of this guy's name. Because literally, it just... Miss... Miss... Kigavage, Miss Kigavi, Miss... Miss, Miss, yeah, no. It, well, I think, I think like miscarriage. Yeah. Miscarriage, miscavage, yeah. miscarriage, miscavage. But there's a G, but there's a G right in the middle of it. That's like a, that's like a, that's like a speed bump in the middle of his name. You want to call him David Miscavage, mm -hmm. but then there's that G. Yeah. Yeah. Miscavage. Well, I kind of look at it like the G is his fucking problem. It's not mine. I'm not taking responsibility for his goddamn G. It doesn't belong yeah. there. Yeah. I'm trying to get these kids to yeah. So anyway, Clearwater, Florida is essentially a Scientology run. Yes. City. So when there's a Scientology death, of course it gets squashed. Of course. Mm-hmm. 
but that's that's no big surprise here. It's like doing an hour long documentary about how people in Alabama are uneducated. Like no shit. <laughs> it's like doing a documentary, an hour long documentary. Is it possible that some people in LA are actually illegal aliens? <laughs> like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Like, I like the meaning and the message behind this documentary. I just think it could have been done a little bit better. Like, it's weird. I had a difficult time watching both of these videos for different reasons, you know? Yeah, because there's so much more that you can do. It's not like, again, it's not like material's not out there anymore. You you, you can't find... Yeah, I, Okay, I guess it's German, so... There's not as much real hot and heavy Scientology action going on there, you know, yeah. but, but they have yeah. a whole fucking building called the hole where they basically keep prisoners yeah. and make them fucking pit fight. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's possible that David Miskagavi's sister is in there. Yes. Or, or his wife. wife or something. His I wife. Remember. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. She's missing. So, um, both of these were a bit difficult to watch. Both of these were uh, um, a bit bad, but I will say this. Yes. Both of these videos are not as bad as (laughs) B-Movie. So, it had that going for him. I'm going to have to agree, yes. And and it... Basically, that's it for homework this week. Do you have anything else you wanted to touch on there? Uh, ye- well, I just wanted to bring up something else, uh, something for potential homework. I had sent you a link for a video a little while back. Uh, it is called... Fart. No, it's not called Farts, Max. Well, thank you for playing. It's it's called it's about this place called Devil's Gate in California. I think I remember you sending me that. <laughs> Which is purported to be a portal to hell. Yeah. And it is really more of a cave kind of a thing. It's a whole mountainside with a cave in it. And it is a really creepy looking mountain. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> but now this uh I got it. Yeah, uh only in your state.com. And this had uh So right around the 1930s it was this uh young scientist who would go out right around the Devil's Gate. <clears throat> And his na- name was Jack uh, Jack Parson, and he was a very very early rocket scientist. Okay. Okay. This, he was before we got any of them from Germany. Any of the good Nazis? Yeah. <clears throat> he was before that, so they would go out into the Devil's Gate area, and they would test rockets. Which wound up leading him to be one of the founding members of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And he has a crater on the moon, on the dark side of the moon, named after him. Huh. Okay. But he's also heavily involved in the cult and is part of the... OTO, I forget what they're they are for, but it was basically Alistair Crowley's coven. Yeah. So he was good personal friends with Alistair Crowley, along with Elron fucking Hubbard. Really? And they had supposedly gone into the cave and did a ritual which was called the Babylon working, which okay. which made the Antichrist manifest in the world. 
<laughs> he was supposed to be human, like but he couldn't really get that, so he's just in his astral form. Yeah. Like you do. That like story, you do. look into it. I think you'll enjoy it. It is... Okay. It, it's it's batshit. It's completely batshit. Yeah, <laughs> I I will I will look into that and see if there's like any sort of like lengthy article about it or something that we can do. It all but there's I, there's like tons. It all depends on which you want to take it. Okay, all right. You know, I, I you do can find, I do have you can find whole documentaries on YouTube, and I've already found them on just the Babylon working because this is like a huge thing in occult circles. Um, well, I have homework for next week, but it's a bit painful. Okay. Well, no, 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 not next okay. week. It is, okay. it is offered for your consideration. Gotcha. Okay. I will write down here. Future <laughs> work question mark. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, that's the question mark right there. It's not a good question mark, but I'm just kind of scribble scrabbling. And that is it for homework this week. And I sincerely hope that your eyes, minds, and dog's bowels have all been suitably open. Ah, <laughs> uh, but don't think you're getting off that easily, Kimosabe. Kimosabe means an Asian person named Sabe is going through chemotherapy. Yes. Kimosabe. Don't forget next week's homework assignment and for next week's assignment, next week's assignment, Bunston, who sang more than a feeling. Bunny. Yes. Bunny. Bunny. Do you like me? I like you. Okay. Will, will you like me no matter what? That's a trick question. Uh, I'm going to go Yes. No matter what, I mean, 133 episodes, we've been a lot, and I'm just trying to make sure that no matter what I throw at you, that you will still like me. This does not involve my anus at all, does it? No. No, okay. it does not. Okay, okay then, your feet. Then, then yes. Okay. Okay. For next week's assignment, we are doing okay. you on kazoo. Uh, what we're doing what? You on kazoo, the infamous 30 minute kazoo instructional video for kids. Oh, no. I'm sorry. But when I saw, I saw, I saw like a, like a, like a remix version of you on kazoo. And it was like, I don't know, like a, a minute and a half, two minutes long. Yeah. So then I went to see. Like, what is this video based on? And then I saw the story of the making of this video and the story of the kid who stars in it. And then I went looking for the actual video and I found it very easy, the full 30-minute video. And basically, I never understood it when Mountaineers said, when people ask Mountaineers, mountain climbers, why did you climb that mountain? And then the, the, the Mountaineers say, because it was there. I never understood <laughs> that. Until I found the infamous 30-minute kazoo instructional video for kids. Because once I saw that, I understood. Because, oh, we have to do that. Yes. There is no reasoning behind it. We just have to do this 30-minute kazoo instructional video. It's really weird interactive. There's a little creepy uh, children of the corn kid who literally talks to you and walks you through the entire video in a really weird, creepy way. Yeah. Like, you could easily see this turning into a Stephen King novel. <laughs> so, you on Kazoo, it's on YouTube, it's all over the place. Uh, that is our homework for next week. So, be sure to visit us next week as we kill ourselves in Kazoo-related desperation. Which is going to be going to be some good podcasting right there. So join <laughs> us next week for more homework with the Popon <laughs> Film Podcast. <laughs> I'm not giving you another piece, Eleanor. You have a bunch of pieces right there. Yeah, right there. That's a piece. Two pieces. Three pieces. Four pieces. Four and a half. This little guy. 
I'm not going to give you more pizzas. No, you don't get all of them. You have to <laughs> in front of you. She does this. Like, here's a piece. Give me another one. Give me a Then I give her a piece. Give me another one. Okay, here's another piece. Just give me all of them. No, you're not getting all of them. <laughs> Eat what you have. Stop throwing them. I'm sorry that you're upset that you can't have all of the pieces. That doesn't mean you throw the food. Dang, you're taking your ball and you're going home. Stop throwing the food. Stop throwing the food. I'm not giving you all of them. Eat. Eat. Eat the food. Eat the food. Don't beat up the food. Eat the food, Eleanor. <laughs> Did you hear her laugh? She's laughing at me. This is, at this me. is starting to sound like an Italian household. Eat the food. Eat. Eat. Try Eat. manja. And you like it. Don't laugh at me. Stop your laughing. I'm trying to get you to eat your food. Eat. I can't believe she's laughing at me. Oh.